Welcome to CSC Guru. In this session, we will discuss about the topic round robin scheduling algorithm. The round robin scheduling algorithm, in short, we will call it as RR scheduling algorithm. This RR algorithm is similar to FCFS scheduling algorithm. But this FCFS scheduling algorithm is a non preemptive scheduling algorithm. But this round robin scheduling algorithm is a preemptive scheduling algorithm. So, the RR scheduling algorithm, we will call it as FCFS scheduling algorithm with preemption or preemptive FCFS is called RR scheduling algorithm. In round robin scheduling algorithm, a small unit of time called the time quantum or the time slice will be implemented commonly for all the process. So, the process will execute with the CPU only for the specified time quantum. Once the time quantum is over, the executing process will leave the CPU and the next process in the job queue will be selected and assigned to the CPU for execution. The next process also will execute only for the specified time quantum and then it will also leave the CPU and then the next process in the job queue will execute with the CPU. Likewise, in FIFO order, the process will be selected and assigned to the CPU for execution and that will execute only for this time quantum only. Once the process burst time is over means that process will leave the job queue. And usually the time quantum is 10 to 100 milliseconds. The round robin scheduling algorithm implements a FIFO queue that is first in first out order. That is whichever the process enters into the job queue first and that will be assigned to the CPU for execution first. And each process will execute only for the specified time quantum. For example, if you are considering the three process, process P1, P2 and P3. And process P1, the CPU burst time is 3 millisecond. Process P2, 6 and process P3, 4. And the time quantum, if you are considering it is 2 milliseconds. So, each process will execute with the CPU for only 2 milliseconds and then it will leave the CPU for the next process in the job queue. So, if you are considering the process will execute in FIFO order that is process P1 enters into the job queue first. So, process P1 will execute with the CPU first and that too only for this time quantum 2 milliseconds. And then process P1 will leave the CPU for next process in the job queue that is process P2. So P2 will execute for 2 milliseconds. So totally 4. And then process P2 will leave the CPU for next process. Process P3 will execute for 2 milliseconds. So now all the three process has completed its time quantum 2 milliseconds each. There is no other process in the job queue. So it will maintain a circular queue. The, once the last process completes its execution, the queue will move to the first process. So now again the process P1 will execute with the CPU only for the specified time quantum. So process P1 if you are considering burst time of 3 milliseconds, already it has completed 2 milliseconds. Now it requires only 1 millisecond. If the burst time or the required execution time is less than the specified time quantum, the process will execute for the required time and then automatically it will release the CPU for the next process. So now process P1 will execute for only 1 millisecond and then process P2 will execute. So process P2 it will execute for 2 milliseconds and then process P3, process P3 will execute for 2 milliseconds. So now if you are considering process P1 completes its execution and it will leave the job queue. And process P3 also completes its execution, it will leave the job queue. And now only one process in the job queue that is P2 and it requires 2 more milliseconds to complete its execution. So process P2 will execute for 2 more milliseconds, so totally 13. So if you are considering here in round robin scheduling algorithm, the process will maintain a FIFO queue order and also the ready queue will be treated like a circular queue. Once the last process completes its execution with the CPU, the queue moves to the first process in the job queue. So, it treats like a circular queue. 
and also the scheduler allocates one time quantum for each process. So here one time quantum represents in the problem if the time quantum has given 2 milliseconds in the sense each process will execute for 2 milliseconds only. So this 2 millisecond will be considered as one time quantum. Suppose if the time quantum is given as 3 milliseconds so each process will execute for 3 milliseconds only. So this 3 millisecond time period we will tell it as one time quantum for each process. And if you are considering here all the process will share the CPU time equally. Also there is no preference or priority given to any specific process. All the process will be treated equally or all the process will get equal chance to execute with the CPU. So this algorithm is considered as fair algorithm. Since in this algorithm the CPU time is shared equally among all the process in the job queue it is used commonly in time sharing systems. This is the working of the CPU scheduler in round robin scheduling algorithm. Initially the scheduler will pick the first process in the ready queue and it will set the time interrupt to the specified time quantum that is the particular process has to execute only for the specified time quantum. If the CPU burst time is less than the specified time quantum, the process will release the CPU and the scheduler will proceed to the next process. Otherwise, suppose if the CPU burst time is more than the time quantum means, the scheduler will dispatch the process once the time quantum is over. The dispatched process is added to the tail of the queue. And then the scheduler will select the next process from the ready queue and this procedure continues again for the next process. Likewise, all the process will get equal chance to execute with the CPU. Also, here each process gets only specified time slice to execute with the CPU. So, none of the process will complete its execution soon unless it is having very least CPU burst time. So, the average waiting time of the algorithm is often long. Now we will solve a problem based on RR scheduling algorithm. Consider the following four process with the time quantum 2 milliseconds and the length of the CPU burst time given in milliseconds. So there are four process with respective burst time. So first we need to construct the GAN chart. The GAN chart is nothing but a bar chart which shows the starting time and the completion time of each process clearly. And here we need to find the completion time, turnaround time and waiting time with the help of this GAN chart. So in round robin scheduling algorithm, the process will be selected in FIFO order and each process will execute only for the specified time quantum and here the time quantum is nothing but 2 milliseconds. So initially process P1 will be selected from the job queue and process P1 will execute with the CPU for only 2 milliseconds. Once the process P1 time quantum is over, the scheduler will choose the next process in the job queue that is process P2 and process P2 also will execute for 2 milliseconds. And then the next process, process P3 will execute for 2 milliseconds. And then the next process, process P3 will execute for 2 milliseconds. So totally 6. And then the next process is P4. Process P4 will execute for 2 milliseconds. So now all the process has executed with the CPU 2 milliseconds each. So now the remaining time for process P1 is 1 millisecond and the next remaining time for process P2 is 4 millisecond and process P3 is 2 millisecond and process P4 has completed its execution. Now the process P4 will leave the CPU. Now in the job queue only process P1, P2 and P3 will be there. So in the same P4 order these three process will execute again. So once the last process completes its execution, it, the next process in the queue is the first process, that is process P1. So now the process P1 will execute only for the required time, not the time quantum because here the 
required execution time is less than the time quantum. So process P1 will execute for only 1 millisecond and it will release the CPU automatically for the next process. Next process P2 will execute for 2 millisecond. And then process P3 will execute for 2 millisecond. Now process P1 also completes its execution and P3 also completes its execution. Only process P2 will be there in the job queue and it requires 2 more milliseconds to complete its execution. So process P2 will execute for another 2 milliseconds so totally 15 milliseconds. So now all the process has completed its execution based on the round robin scheduling algorithm that is each process is executed only for 2 milliseconds in every cycle. So now we will check the completion time for each process. The completion time is nothing but the time when the process completes its execution with the CPU. So if you are considering process P1, it is assigned at the time 0 millisecond. But actually when it completes means at the time of 9 millisecond, the process P1 completes its execution with the CPU. So the completion time for process P1 is 9 and process P2 if you are considering it has completed only at 15 milliseconds. So completion time for process P2 is 15 and process P3 if you are considering it has completed at 13 milliseconds and process P4 the completion time is 8 milliseconds. Next we need to find the turnaround time. The turnaround time is nothing but the time interval between when the process enters into the job queue and when it completes its execution with the CPU. The time interval is nothing but the turnaround time. This turnaround time we can able to calculate with the formula completion time minus arrival time. Since arrival time is not given here, so the completion time itself is the turnaround time because arrival time here is 0 milliseconds. Next, we need to find the waiting time. The waiting time is nothing but how long each process waits in the job queue before it is assigned to the CPU for execution. So now, we will calculate the waiting time with the help of the formula turnaround time minus burst time. So turnaround time we know and the burst time is also given. So waiting time is 9 minus 3 for process P1. It is 6 millisecond, 15 minus 6. It is 9 for process P3, 13 minus 4. It is 9 and for process P4, it is 8 minus 2. It is 6. Next, we need to find the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. So, average turnaround time is nothing but sum of the turnaround time of all the process divided by number of process. So, sum of the turnaround time is 45. And the number of processes 4, that is 11.25 milliseconds. And the average waiting time is sum of the waiting time of all the process divided by number of process. So sum of the waiting time is 30 divided by number of processes 4, that is 7.5 milliseconds. So if you are considering the average waiting time is 7.5 and the average turnaround time was 11.25 milliseconds. So in this way, we need to solve the round robin scheduling algorithm. Thank you for watching this video.